What's up guys, Bloodshed here, bringing you the Condemn Crusader Push Greater Rift build for Diablo 3 patch 2.6.1 in Season 12. Now, they did it, they keep on buffing, and the buffs keep coming and they don't stop coming. So, the Akon set got buffed another 100%, so now it's a total of 1000% with a 50% damage reduction. And if you didn't hear, Blizzard actually announced that there's going to be no more really major changes in the PTR. So all the videos we made are going to stick, boys. Nothing is getting nerfed. Nothing has been nerfed at all. If anything, just Bless Shield got a slight nerf, but it's not that bad. So it's still really good. Um, the offhanded shield got buffed to 800%. So they buffed the um, offhand for the Condemned even further. And the Blade of Prophecy got buffed even further to 800% damage. So... It's crazy. The speed build that we put out is even better. I'm actually working on a revised version of that as we speak. But until then, here we go with the push build itself. As always, we're using 800 Paragon on the board. No augments, no funny business. I even have a non-ancient shield. And this, this, this weapon actually is like, you know, 65% off the cap. So it could be better. Could be better. Basically, group up enemies. Spam, condemn, and win. Let's go ahead and do a greater rift. We cleared a 92 with this power with 800 Paragon. So I'll probably jump into something comfortable like an 88 just to kind of display the power for you guys. So one thing to note with this build is we want to spam condemn and it's going to pull them into you. You can see it right away. It's pulling all the enemies in. You pretty much just want to focus elites, but in this situation, it's fine. If you get some good progression mobs, who's going to fall to, right? We don't really have any way of moving around. We're not using pony or anything like that. So you're going to have to sometimes just take what the rift gives you. Let me try not to mash on my keys so much for you guys. All right. I, I listen. I listen. I hear your comments. I'll do my best to accommodate. All right. Let's look for an elite. This is a good map, but you know, no elites here. But we'll just kill this density. And you want to proc, condemn. It actually takes three seconds and then it unleashes a huge explosion. So... You can send an Oculus Rings, as always. Oculus Rings are really good. You can see how it pulls them in, and it's proccing the strong arms. And here's... Oh, we do have elites. Okay. I'm tripping. There are elites here. Um, we're immune to CC because Akarat's champion. Again, you want enough cooldown for perma Akarat's champion. I think that number is 55%. I always forget because I'm just looking at my cooldowns, and we're not using Gogok or anything. I'm usually just looking at my cooldowns, and seeing what do i need so i'm always tweaking the build and stuff like that but i think it's like 55 56 just just watch this little bar and if it's not up perfectly then you need more or less cooldown so you can see the progression we're already doing really well killing density grouping them up we are using convention of elements but since we have pretty much unlimited resource you don't have to um be so attentive to it I consider this to be very similar to the um, Holy Shotgun, the Lazy Shotgun build we put out on the channel. Except for with this, you get to direct the power more. So with Lazy Shotgun, you have to get hit to do damage, basically. With this, you're kind of selecting where you want the damage. So Lazy Shotgun's tankier and easier to play. This is a little bit more directive with the power. Um, so they're both good. It's almost like what playstyle you like more, right? It's almost preference. and. That's what this patch seems to be about, is a lot of preference. So let's go ahead and pick these up, get all the globes, and move on to the next part. We are using Bane of the Stricken, so we're gonna have to, we need that for the Guardian. We also need Trapped, let's grab the Speed Pylon. And we need Esoteric to survive. Some of the affixes are crazy, especially like um, in close quarter combat, you know, having like the Arcane Beams and um, Fire Chains, that really, really hurts. And so you want to poison sometimes can hurt. So like right now you can see I'm starting to dip a little bit. So you want to use SO. Don't swap it out. You really, really need it in the build here. Group them up. Cast Condemn a bunch of times. Sometimes likes to just go crazy and empty. Just spam it over and over again. We pretty much have unlimited resources with the build. So that's really nice. I decided to go with uh, Punish Fury. What that does is it increases your critical strike chance and Punish Fury, that critical strike chance is gonna affect Condemn. So it's gonna help Condemn hit harder than it is. Um, we're using Hit Me, it's gonna give us block chance or ability. pull the mobs in, help group them up. And we're using um, Iron Skin Flash as well. It's really good abilities, even the, um, the Laws of Justice decaying strength, they're gonna do less damage to us. It's basically gonna give us a good opportunity to survive. 
you know, in the midst of battle, you know, behind enemy lines here, just kind of tank and spank all the way, stand an Oculus ring, proc those condemns, and pick up your globes. And spoils of war. Wait, is there another one? Oh, he's still here. Okay. Oh, he's a juggernaut. So juggernauts are a little bit tougher, but they're doable up until about 95 or so, I noticed. I didn't have any problem. Maybe beyond that, I'm only using 800 Paragon. So if you have more than that, or you have even level 70 augments, you should be able to take on jugs maybe to around the GR 100 range. So expect to push well beyond 100, especially if you even have like, say, 80 augs. But 90, 90, 95, 100 augs are like the new 80 augments since all the other classes got buffed up. So expect to push higher than you've ever pushed before next season. Basically, you're as strong as a necromancer or at least a lightning, a lightning, uh, I almost said druid, or a lightning wizard. Druid confirmed, boys. You heard it here first. The Akarad's champion rune, again, uh, we're using profit. It's such a powerful rune. The first time you take fatal damage while Akarad's champion is active, active Akarad's champion, you come back to life. And you, so that's really good. It's gonna, basically, it's a cheat death on a short cooldown. And you can see, maybe I'll force a death here. That force of death. So when you die, you come back to life, and you can see right here, Champion of Akarat. It's really, really cool. And again, since we're, you know, in the thick of it, it's really nice to have that extra cushion. Pretty good for hardcore. Um, for hardcore, I, I might play Lazy Shotgun, but it's nice to have the option to play something else. If you like Condemn more, you know, it's the options there. The power is yours. I did decide to go with Unity for the elite damage and we're using a furnace in the cube. So lots of elite damage stacking. You can use the Justice Lantern. The Justice Lantern technically will give you more survivability during Provoke since there is no cap from what I'm understanding with the damage reduction from the Justice Lantern. So it's technically a slight, slight more of a, da of a survivability increase but you lose that elite damage and Unity is a little bit more consistent survivability since you don't need to do any kind of block chance or exterior this or that. So you can use either one. It does feel nicer when you use Justice Lantern just because we're stacking block chance and we're using the passive. But um, yeah, if anything changes, always check the description down below for the latest version of the build. I'm gonna continuously update and do like every, you know, go through and do like the um, minor details of all the builds before the season goes live. Right now, I'm just getting the builds out there, what's working, what's working for me and other players, and the actual nitty gritty will get hammered out, so to speak, before the season actually begins. In this build, I went with Leoric's Crown for more cooldown, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with it. I might do String of Ears or something else. There might be something better, maybe even uh, Nemesis Bracers. I'm not sure which direction I'm gonna go, but as of right now, Leoric's works great for me. I have plenty of cooldown and I can allocate the cooldown on my gear to other stats that may be more desirable for the playstyle. Group them up, knock them down and continue. But yeah, so we do get trapped once in a while. I was thinking about illusionary boots in the cube, but that's what flash is for. So flash allows you to move, flash iron skin allows you to move unhindered through enemies. So I was going to put illusionary boots in the build because there's no we don't have any pony we're kind of trapped sometimes so that's what it's nice having flash because that's our get out of jail free card whenever we get trapped somewhere it allows us to kind of get around the rift and um, you don't feel so hindered if you have that and then the extra cooldown when it's up definitely helps that situation we're almost at the rift guardian once we get to the rift guardian we can kind of see the stricken at work and see how you know we go about killing that guy um the belt i'm using here is the string of ears but you can use the Vigilante Belt if you, like, let's say you put a String of Ears in the cube and you need more cooldown. It's kind of like depending on your character, your drops, what you're going for. Right now I'm using String of Ears, but you definitely can use, like I said, um, a Vigilante Belt if you'd like or whatever. A Witching Hour might be okay as well. Extra DPS can come in handy. Always, always more deeps is definitely useful. 98%. Let's get it. All right, let's go. Let's go pop it. Use the hit me rune. The hit me um, provoke also gives you resource back. So if you ever get low, you can go ahead and do that. Originally, I had a resource gem in my helm, and I decided that it's not needed actually because um, provoke gives us plenty of resource. And we use this with hammering too. Like we provoke, get resource back, and it's pretty much invincible. So Saxtrus is pretty good. We can sit here, get ads off of, uh, get resource back off the ads, and we should be able just to sit here. Let's see. 
spam condemn and then the ads will give us oculus rings as well which is going to give us more damage i wonder how long the actual kill time might be uh oh we're getting low Akrat's champion so i know that i do have that cheat death okay so this should proc an, proc an oculus i do also know look at the damage oh my goodness that oculus ring that 85 percent multiplicative damage let's jump over here go back in it and then the stricken stacking also so that's always good let me know what you guys think of this build. It's kind of cool to have different options and, um, you know, within the same... Oh, I need the shield for my invoker. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's good to know I have... Uh, we have different options when we're pushing. You know, we can side with Condemn or you can side with Holy Shotgun, Hammerdine, Bless Shield, Thorns, Invoker, Pony Build, right? There's all kinds of things to choose from. So, yeah, make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed. We stream there six days a week, Diablo. I've been doing Diablo in the morning to midday, and then at the end of the stream, we've been ending with, like, um, Destiny. So, yeah, looking forward to that. So come say hi on the streams if you have any other questions, or post them down below in the comments. I read every comment. I don't have time to respond to every comment, but I do. If you want to support for further, check me out at patreon.com slash bloodshed. Links will be down below. If you're watching this in season 12, good luck, Nephilim. May all the drops be with you. This is the bubble bubble bu bu bloodshed, and I'm out of here. Peace.